Sholten, makers of Old Spice aftershave lotion for the top of the world feeling after every shave, brings you the top of the world in action drama for men. Hi, adventure! Just as the man said, this is High Adventure. And in the event you're not sure what that means, I'll tell you. It means if you have the heart for it, one that can stand a little excitement, mister, sit down. We'll try and give it some exercise. High Adventure means a story of savage action and strong suspense. A story of a man like you, perhaps, who lives a normal life. But this man had one thrilling moment or incident which has but one definition. High Adventure. And to prove our point, on the agenda is Sentinel on 73rd. Written and directed for High Adventure by Bob Monroe, which concerns a man who saw too much, talked too much, and... (laughs) Well, you find out for yourself. Here is Sentinel on 73rd, told by the man it happened to. Stanley Trimmer's big city story of High Adventure. There's a great deal of truth in the old saying that if we could see ourselves as other people see us, we'd all be a lot better human beings. You never pay any attention to a saying like that until it applies to you. But it applied to me, and I found out the truth. I had a good job, head salesman for the used car department of a good dealer. Had a good wife and a comfortable living. I liked most people. I thought most people liked me. But I guess the real change began that evening I made Larry stay at the showroom with me, handle customers, while I made out expense vouchers for the last week. It was about 9.20 when we finally closed up, let ourselves out through the side door into the building lobby. And I bet you we sell that convertible before another day's business. That's the kind of car that moves fast. It's a dog. It'll stay on the floor for months. Have you ever handled them before? Why, of course I have. Look, the kids come in, they look at it, they lay down their dough. I know it won't sell. We'll mark it down tomorrow. All right, lose money on it. See what Manny says. That's the only way we'll get rid of it. I know. I said all right. Well, good night, Larry. Where you going? Aren't you going to have a cup of coffee? I want to phone May. I'm starting home. Besides, coffee keeps you awake. That's just talk. No, it does. I know. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. You can get out through the front lobby door. It's still open. I thought they left the side door open. It's the front door. I know. If you say so. Good night, Larry. May, I'm through. I'm starting home. Yes, Stan. You get my suit from the cleaners? I couldn't find the ticket. May, I told you it was in the top drawer of the dresser. I looked, but it wasn't there, Stan. It is. I put it there myself. Well, I did look. It's there. I know. Perhaps you put it in the... I'll show you when I get home. It's the side door. Uh, What? what? Front door's locked like I thought. Hello? Now I'll try the side door. Good night, Stan. Yes, uh, good night, Larry. Hello? I'm still here, May. What's the matter? Just saying good night to Larry. Oh, how's he getting along? Got a lot to learn. I'll tell you about it when I get there. All right, Stan. I'll be home in about 20 minutes. Be careful. The traffic on the drive's heavy this time of night. No, it isn't. Not this late. Well, the last time we I've went... driven it a hundred times, May. I know. I'll be home in 20 minutes. Yes, Stan. Bye. Oh, oh excuse me. I didn't know you were waiting. <coughs> uh, front door's always open. Larry doesn't know how to work the night lock. Some people never learn. I thought so. I thought so. All right, all right. Stay back, will you? you want to see a dead body, go to your old lady's funeral. Hey, Stan! What's going on, Larry? The guy was just shot. He was stepping out of that car at the curb when bam, bam, he gets it before he goes three steps. Oh, that's terrible. They're looking for the guy that done it now. They're going to close in, search the whole block. They know who did it? Yeah, sure. There's this guy in a gray overcoat. He walked right up, pulled out a gun and shot him. You see it? No, I got it from the policeman. They're looking for the guy in a gray overcoat. Gray overcoat. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Officer! Stay back, will you? Officer, he's in that building. I saw him. 
Who'd you see? Man in a gray overcoat. He was in the lobby of the building. Sure, he had a gray overcoat. I know. I saw him. I didn't see him. But he was there when I came out of the phone booth right after you left. What building? There at the corner of 73rd. There's plenty of guys with gray overcoats. Why don't take a man and cover that building in the corner? I'm the devil. I know it was a man. How do you know? He had a strange look on his face. You saw his face? Why, eh? yes, I certainly did. Got a good look at it, eh? Oh, yes. That's fine, fine. More than anybody else has. Frank. Yes, sir. Any luck yet? We got the whole block surrounded, sir. He can't get away. No, they never do. We got prowled cars in all four corners. Why don't you find somebody who saw which way I he went? I've trying to, sir. He didn't have any luck. Right? I saw the man. Oh, you did? Yes, sir, just before I came out of the building. What building? Northwest corner, 73rd, right over there. Mike, you got the men checking on sure, this? Sure, they're working on it now. Why don't you tell me about this? He just come up and told me about this it. man wearing a gray overcoat? Yes, he was. Short, tall, or average height? Uh, tall. Dark cat? Why, yes. Sounds like I kill you. You got a look at his face? Oh, yes. Did you recognize him again if you saw him? Why, yes, I certainly could. Uh, Lieutenant. Yeah? The boys found this in the phone booth in the building lobby. Well, let's see it. 32 automatic. It's about the right caliber for the only guy's head. We'll check it in the lab. I'll turn it over to the sergeant. Now, mister, that gun makes it important. Yes? You're positive you can identify the man well, you saw. Well, I know I can. You have to be positive. I am. All right, come along. What for? You're evidently the only person around here who kept his eyes open. Well, I... <laughs> they get away from us in spite of all we can do. They're that slippery sometimes. We got you, mister, and you'll give them the chair. I'll what? Evidently, our killer slipped into your building, got rid of the gun in the phone booth, and then came out and joined the crowd. Without you, we wouldn't know him from the next guy. So come along, you're going to be busy. Where are we going? Station. Arnett will bring him in eventually, and when it does, he won't get away. You'll be there to identify him. Ah, uh, what's your name, mister? Trimmer, Stan Trimmer. All right, come along, Mr. Trimmer. Now, until we get our boy, you're an important man. I am? You are, mister. And until we do get our boy, we're going to see that nothing happens to you. Mike! Yes, sir? Put him in a prowl car. Take him down to precinct station. Watch over him. He's important. Lug him up tight. Yes, sir. Okay, let's go, mister. You're getting a free room and bath. Well, thank you. I'll, I'll be glad to help. Larry, will you call my wife and explain for me? Tell her I'll phone her as soon as I can. Oh, sure. Tell her the police want me for some very important work. Well, that's stepping into it with your eyes closed, isn't it? Of course, it's a good thing for our friend Stan Trimmer to help the police if he can, but he seems too sure about everything. Anyway, we'll find out the truth, but this is the beginning of another high adventure. They say it's dangerous to think you know all the answers, and I guess we'll have proof of that before we've gone much further with our high adventure story. But there are some things it's not only safe but smart to be sure of. For instance, it's safe and smart for every man to know that Old Spice after shave lotion is the perfect finish for a shave. Old Spice aftershave lotion is soothing, antiseptic, and healing to the skin. It instantly takes away uncomfortable razor burn, and your skin feels cool and refreshed. Old Spice aftershave lotion has a clean, fresh, masculine scent that men prefer, and we've heard it rumored that the girls like it too. No wonder more men buy Old Spice than any other aftershave lotion at a dollar. Yes, everywhere you go, you'll find that men who appreciate real quality, men who know the value of good grooming, say for that top-of-the-world feeling, I use Old Spice Lotion every time I shave. And now back to Sentinel on 73rd, as told by the man it happened to, Stan Trimmer. His story of high adventure. It was all in the papers the next day. My name and picture on the front pages. Man killed was named Sadler. It was thought he had something to do with the underworld and gangs in the city. Police were very nice to me. When I objected to being in a jail cell, they put me up at a hotel, kept a patrolman to watch over me. My wife, May, came down to see me every day. I had her start a scrapbook of all the times my name or picture was in the papers. But after a while, after days of looking at police photos of criminals and watching them parade men before me, I guess the police began to get tired. We'll be ready for you in a minute. Yeah. I'll be ready, Lieutenant. I hope we'll have some luck today. I'm sure we will. Yeah. Your wife's outside. Oh, thank you, thank you. Don't go anywhere. I won't. No, you wouldn't. Stan. Good morning, May. It's the man he called this morning. Oh, how is he? He wants to know when you're coming back to work. Oh, he does? Stan, it's been weeks and he has a right to... I can't help it if the police want me, can I? No, it's just taking so long. We haven't found the killer yet. Are you sure you did see him, Stan? May, I know I did. All right. Oh, here, here's some more clippings from the paper. Yes. Next time you come down, bring the scrapbook. I'd like to see it. I will. You pasted them in neatly, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, not any pictures like there was at first. I guess the papers have lost interest. Here, this is a good one in the papers here yesterday. Listen in the editorial section here. 
It, it seems now added to the list of the city's unsolved crimes is the Sadler killing. The police still have Mr. Stanley Trimmer, who can positively identify the murder in this case, yet so far they have been unable, and then there's some more of it. Uh, be sure you underline my name, eh? I will. All right, Trimmer. I'm coming. Stan, why don't you come home? Why, I can't. Why don't you just say you don't remember what he looks like? Then they'll let you come home and live a normal life. Oh, I couldn't do that. Better than living I here. told you I'm important in this case. Without me, they don't have a thing. Please, Stan. I can't, you know I can't. No, I suppose not. I'll see you tomorrow, May. And, and don't forget the scrapbook. I won't. Bye, dear. Over here, Trimmer. Oh, thank you, thank you. Sit down. Yes, yes. All right, Mike, start him through. Yes. Push me, sir, cross. Come on, line up here, sir. That's it. <laughs> Any of those? No, none of those. Take them off, bring on the next group. All right, walk off to the left. So you'd know him if you saw him, huh? I know I would, Lieutenant. I've told you that a hundred times. Yeah, just wonder. I think you're doing a wonderful job, and I realize that it takes time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring him on, Mike. Yes, sir. By the way, the big boys are getting impatient. I don't understand. Very simple. We're getting no results. If we don't pretty soon, they're going to assign me to something else. You mean give up? No, just let it rest for a while. Wouldn't you like to go home? Well, uh, yes. You uh, must be tired of all this anyway, aren't you? Why, no, of course not. Now, cross and face no. the center. That's it. Now, hey, take your hand away from your eyes over there. Come on, face front. Look into the light. One of these, is it? No, no. All right, move them out. Uh, wait. All it. Yeah. That, uh, the, the third man from the end. Does he look like the one? Uh, let me see. Well... I think, I think he's the one. What? Yes, he is. You're sure? He doesn't have on a gray overcoat, but he's the one. Now we're getting somewhere. Yes, that's the man. Step a out of line, Mike, third from the left. Yes, sir. Now, what do you say, Trimmer? That's him. You're not making a mistake. I know, I tell you. That's the man. You'll swear to that in court. Of course I will. All right. That's it, Mike. We got him. Well, I guess you'll be able to get back to work, huh, Stan? Yes, yes, I will. You sure shot off your mouth at the trial. Oh, they told what I know. Yeah, I read this morning in the paper. He's uh, going to get the chair. Huh? Every word I said, they quoted me in the papers. Well, now you can get back to selling cars, huh? I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? Well, I've been debating whether I should tell Manny that I'm quitting. Quitting? What for? Well, you know how it is, Larry. There's more important things than selling cars. Oh, heck, you can move a lot of them now. What with your name and picture in the papers? Everybody will know you. Yes, but there's more important things to do. Yeah, like what? Well, after watching the prosecutor work in the courtroom, I don't know. Maybe I'll uh, go into politics. What do you know about politics? Uh, I know more than you realize. I've got a little name now, so I think I'll... Oh, excuse me. <coughs> People look where they're going. Hey, what's the matter? What are you stopping for? I, I, I don't... What are you staring at? You know him? No. No. He must know you. He stopped and turned around. <gasps> no. Hey, what's eating you? We, we better get to work. Come on. Yeah. Hey, wait! No. You sick? Huh? Gotta, get, gotta get inside. I, I felt sick when I, I was... It can't be. I know it can't be. Hey, Stan, uh, maybe you better see a doctor. You look white oh, as... Where's it? the phone? There's one upstairs in Manny's office. No, I, I don't need it. You got heart trouble, huh? Operator. Hey, your friend's outside the window looking in. See him? Operator, I want the... What? I said your friend must have followed you. He's outside the window looking in. The guy you bumped into. Operator. Where? There, by the door. Oh. Operator. You want me to uh, ask him in? No. No. Operator. You better go home, Stan. You look bad. Home, yes, home. Larry. Yeah? Would, would you mind driving me home? I don't think I can make it. Alone, I mean. Sure, sure. Come on. May. Yes? Yeah. Come here. What is it? Look out the window across the street there. What? See that man by the drugstore? Yes. You know him? Can't see him very well. You know him. See, he's walking under the street light. No, I don't. Stan, won't you let me call a doctor? No. You look. I said no. It's just my imagination. Yes, that's it. We should eat some supper. It's got to be. It's got to be. Read in the paper that your killer's going to be elected. Will you be quiet?
All right. It's the door. No, it's the phone. I'll get it. If it's, if it's for me, I'm not... Hello? Yes? Who's calling? Oh, just a moment. It's for you, Stan. Who is it? I don't know. He won't give his name. Tell him I'm not... Tell him... Tell him what? What, Stan? I'll take it. Hello? Stanley Trimmer? Yes? Don't talk. <coughs> what? Don't what? talk. I don't understand. What? Hello? Hello? Don't talk. Who was it? I was sure. I was sure. Stan, what is it? Call Lieutenant Boyle. Made a mistake, yes? Stan! Tell him I made it the wrong. Don't, don't, don't talk. It's a killer. No. Stan, no. sit down. I've, I've got to think. I've got to think. Don't talk. Killer. <laughs> Stan. Hey, Stan. Yes? How come you're so late? Still feeling bad? Yes, yes, that's it. Say, uh, I sold the convertible. You remember you said... Who are you staring at? You see somebody you know outside? What? Oh, nothing. No, no, nobody. Oh, oh yeah, there's a guy waiting for you. Where? Sitting back in that convertible. I told him I didn't know if you'd be in, but he said he'd uh, wait around a bit. Oh, it's you. Hello, Lieutenant. Nice buggy. How much is it? I, I don't know. Uh, around 1200 Too much. What do you want? Yeah, I just dropped around to say hello. Well, I'm, I'm very busy. I have to make up for time lost, you know. You, you know how it is. Sure. Well, they took your killer up the river yesterday. Did they? Expecting somebody? No, I... Keep looking out that door. Why, just looking for customers. Yeah. How much is this one? Uh, 1800 Too much. You know, Trimmer, I still can't figure a motive for that Collins boy. Motive? He didn't have an alibi. He had a conviction for robbery against him, but I can't see a weak-minded character like him walking right up and shooting down Benny Sattler. Nah. It takes a cold killer. A guy will knock off two, three people, not give it a second thought. That's why we kept you guarded until you identified Collins and we got him pinned down. Looked like that kind of murder. You were safe. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh, well, you've got him for us. He's going to burn in two weeks. Lieutenant. Yeah? I... Yeah? I I, I, I don't know. Where are you going? I, I just want to see. Oh, no. You must be hungry for customers. Why not go outside and grab him instead of looking through the window? While Lieutenant, I... I made a mistake. What? I made a mistake. I identified the wrong man. You what? Collins wasn't the man I saw in the building lobby. He's innocent. What makes you think so? I saw the real killer on the street. I bumped into him a couple of days ago. Lieutenant, you've oh, got to... So that's it. I never figured you'd get to I it. saw him and he... Now, take it easy, Trimmer. Don't worry about but it. But I can't help it. That innocent man is going to die. The real killer knows that I've talked Just to you. Just relax, he... relax. And it's the way he looked at me when I bumped into him. He, he knew With who I was. With your picture in the papers so much, how could he help? Him? Exactly. And then that now, night... Trimmer, he... relax, I said. I know all about it. You you do? Sure, it's happened before more times than I can count. Yes? Sure. With this well put a guy in the electric chair, he gets conscience stricken. Feels guilty. You have that terrible feeling that you might have made a mistake. Yes, but I'm sure. I know, I know, I know all about it. You try to pick out another guy's a real killer. That's what your conscience does. Believe me, it's all it is. It happens all the time. Too much excitement for you, that's all. Need a little relaxation. Maybe, maybe that's it. Sure, go home, take it easy. I'll drop around again after it's all over and you'll feel better. Just relax. You did what any other public spirited citizen would do. That's what the papers said. You see it. And relax, will you? Relax. Yes, it's just my... The phone. Lieutenant, he called me on the phone and he said... He, he called me on the phone. Hey, Stan. Manny wants to see you. Hey, Stan, where you going? Get home. Save it home. Here's the evening paper, Stan. You got all of them? Yes. Getting quite cold out. Stan. Yes? It's been over a week. You've got to go out sometime. I'm all right. Found the showroom. They put Larry in your job. What if they did? What if they did? I thought you'd like to know. Living off our savings, Stan, they won't last. I know what I'm doing. Will you let me alone? A beautiful new sedan parked across the street when I came in. Do you see it? Yes. 
thought you might be interested, because it's the kind you always said you want to sell. And I see it. I tell you, I see it. What do you want me to do? Get down on my knees and thank you for pointing it out to Only me? Thought... I don't care what you thought. I don't care about anything. Dan, is it because that Collins man's going to be electrocuted? No, no, it's not that. It's not anything. Will you get out of here and stop asking me questions? Get out, get out! Can't you understand what I want? Get out! Yes, I understand. And that's the last time. What? You're never going to shout at me again. May. You've always been right. You've always known that nobody else could be right. Then you happened to get your name and picture in the play because you're new, and it only made you worse. May. No, I'm not going to get out. You are. Here, take your scrapbook and get out. You get out. Get out. No, May, no, no, no. All the time he's been waiting outside. I've seen him, May. Get out. May, no. No, May. Things are getting pretty hot for Stanley Trimmer. He's lost his job, his wife threw him out, and someone who thinks he shouldn't talk seems to be following him very closely. What would you do if you were faced with a situation so clearly murderous, uh, with you as the victim? Well, we'll find out. And by this time, I'm sure you'll agree it's the kind of story that can only be called High Adventure. I'm going to take you away from this tense moment of high adventure for just 45 seconds. But it's well worth the time because I'm going to say a word about the self-confidence that comes to a man when he's sure of good grooming. We all know how much good grooming really counts in business as well as in social life. That's why it's so important to make a habit of using Old Spice aftershave lotion with every morning shave. Once you've tried Old Spice lotion, its bracing freshness will become a part of your daily grooming you'll never want to miss. And you'll find that the ship-decorated Old Spice bottles are a pleasure to see and to use. So remember, for a wonderful sense of confidence and well-being, use Old Spice aftershave lotion tomorrow and every morning. Now back to Stanley Trimmer as he continues his story of I adventure. When May pushed me out of the house, I started up the street, and the first thing in my mind was to head straight for the police station. Then I heard the footsteps behind me. I knew if I headed in that direction, I'd never get there alive. He'd kill me before the police got there to save me. He'd have got me the moment he knew I'd tipped them off. And now it was too late. Too late to go to the police and convince them I'd been wrong. Too late to admit to the newspapers I'd been wrong. That I'd made a fool of myself. It was too late. There was only one place I could think of to go. And I headed there. I was afraid to look behind me. Finally, I didn't hear the footsteps anymore, and I looked and no one was following me. It was dark when I let myself in the showroom. Only light from the neon sign in the window to see by. Don't turn him on, Jim. What? We can do without no lights. What do you want? Don't you know, Jim? Well, no. I said, <coughs> don't talk. Talk? No, no, I, I, I didn't. Talk. I think you did. No, no, I didn't. Come back away from the windows. All right. All right. More. Yes. You see the heater, don't you? Yes. Just so you don't get ideas. What do you want? What do you think? I, I don't know. I, I don't have much money in my wallet. Money? <laughs> I, I didn't tell anyone. I swear I didn't. You swore to a couple of things that wasn't true. I. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Yes. But I just want to make sure you keep on doing good by me. I will, I, I will. And there's just one way I know how to do it. I don't like wasting time checking up on you all the time, so tonight you made my wedding pay off. If you kill me, and Collins will die for a murder he didn't have anything to do with. And I'm clean. Is that bad? Yes. Goodbye, Jim. You're not going to get away with it. You're going to stop me? Yes. How? Well, first I take some paper clips from the desk yeah. here, and I pick up the phone oh, no, and you... dial for the police. 
That's the least I can do. Goodbye, chum. <laughs> Don't tell me I missed. Not a clean job. Need some more. Well, I'll get you. I'll keep between you and the door. I can't lose, can I? <sighs> Where did I get you? In the arm? I don't want to shoot holes in these nice, pretty cars. You boss might not like... Get that off! No, you don't. I got to There. Are you tricky, you little... One more. One more. You think you can cook? Swear by this one. Noise, noise. Oh, they won't, won't stick. I've got to make them stick. Somebody's got to hear... Get out of here! Get That's it! It's out cold! Set them over the air! Get the lights while I cut this racket! Hey, here he is, over here. Hello, Flake. Fine, keep your eye on the punk. Yes, sir. All right, Trimmer, we can... Where are you hit? In my, in my shoulder. Ambulance, Mike! Yes, sir. Well, some trick. Using the paper clips to hold down the car horns, Trimmer. Or outside, but we wouldn't have known anything was wrong, or if you were even inside, if you hadn't pulled it. I hope somebody would hear. A man lost you when you took the subway. But we figured you'd come here. Your man? Sure, we've been watching you for the last three weeks. I thought it over. I knew something must have scared you. You weren't the type to have a conscience. It was a hunch. I, I tried to tell you. I guess I was afraid what would happen if you found out I was wrong. Everybody's got a right to be wrong. Yes. The eater man over there must have been waiting inside here until the night you came down. Too bad you didn't tell us all about it. We could have protected you better. Anyway, Collins will go free, so you won't have to worry about your conscience. You'll have more headlines and pictures for your scrapbook. I don't want them. Oh, not worth the price of a bullet in the shoulder, huh? No. It's more more costly than that. I didn't pay it. They did. Larry, even Manny did. Man I never knew, stranger, that Collins almost paid with his life. I'll pay them back. I'll pay them back. I'm never sure of anything, mister, so I'll be watching. Mike, where's that ambulance? Sentinel on 73rd. As told by the man it happened to, Stanley Trimmer. Thank you, sir. We'll place your story in the archives of the High Adventure Society, marked hold for future publication. And if you ask me, I'd say that you do have a right to be wrong once in a while, but never in the wrong place at the right time, or the writing of a wrong can be left right out in the middle of... (laughs) There, you see how complicated it can get? Well, anyway, featured in the High Adventure cast for this meeting were Wendell Holmes, Connie Lemke, Ross Martin, Maurice Tarplin, and Earl George. The High Adventure music is conducted by Lou Davies. And next week, friends and members, the High Adventure Society is proud to present one of the strangest tales ever to find its way into our society files. It's about four men who gambled with death for million-dollar stakes, only to find that someone always loses. We call it the Snowmen. So, until next week and the Snowmen, this is your presiding officer saying, it's around you no matter where or who you are. Only we call it High Adventure. Remember to join us again next week when Shulton brings you another exciting story of High Adventure, The Snowmen. And remember, too, that Old Spice after shave lotion gives you wonderful value for your money. There are two generous sizes of this quality lotion, a dollar and a dollar seventy-five. Look for the handsome red Old Spice cartons at drug and department stores everywhere. And for that top-of-the-world feeling, use Old Spice lotion after every shave. Today, hear comedy and mystery with Henry Morgan and Chris London on NBC. NBC.